Hey, what's up? I'm Dylan from Stupid Raisins, and this is how to use InfoPop. You can find InfoPop in the title browser in Final Cut Pro. Click on the title browser button up in the upper left-hand corner to show it, and then scroll down until you see InfoPop in the category. InfoPop is organized into vertical and horizontal info bars. You can preview them by skimming over the thumbnail to see the animation. This is a vertical one, and here's a horizontal one. InfoPop uses special fonts to get just the right look. So if you want it to look exactly how it was designed, you'll need to download and install those fonts. I've put together a list of required fonts, and you can find it in the user guide slash help page. Let's take a look at this template. Let's add it to our timeline by dragging and then dropping it. I can change the duration of the title by clicking and dragging on the beginning or end to make it shorter or longer. I can also select it, press Control D, and enter a new value. Let's enter five seconds, five zero zero, and press enter. Oh, that's a little too long for my clip, so I'll just shorten it a little bit more. And then I can click and drag to move it around in the timeline. So right away we can see that this splits the video and reveals an info bar. If I hover over some text, I get this little box. If I double click on it, it will select all the text and I can add my own words. We'll say jump. If I click on it, it will open up the inspector here, the text inspector. If you don't see it, click on these three sliders up here, this button, and that will open the inspector. Then I can select this and I can add my own text. I can also change the font and the size and a few other things. Let's make jump bigger. I'll click and drag up on this number. There we go. And then I'll select rope and I'm going to make it bigger as well. Oh no, it's overlapping there, but that's okay. We have these on-screen controls. I can click and drag on text to move it around. Or in the inspector, I can go right here under position and I'll click and drag on the Y value to make it only move down and not side to side. Let's select this text here and let's change the font by clicking here and selecting a new font. Let's also make it a little bit smaller. There we go. If we want to change the color of our words, we need to select the word and then under face, click show and then click on this color swatch here and pick a new color. Let's leave these white for now. Now go to the title inspector by clicking on this square with a T in it. And we have a bunch of published parameters here we can use to customize our look. If I double click on top of the inspector, it opens it up all the way so I don't have to scroll to get to any parameters. I can turn on and off the build in and out animations with these parameters here. And I can also tell the template to split the background or don't split the background. I like how it animates and splits, so I'm gonna keep that on for right now. This template has some shapes in here, some pluses and circles floating around, and I can customize them with these controls controls here. I can change their color, I can make them thicker, and I can make them bigger or smaller. I can customize these rectangles here with these controls. I can change the color. Let's try dark purple. When I change the position, it moves that text with it. I can also turn them down or completely off. I can make them thicker, and I can change the size of it as well. I can make it wider to fit longer words, or I can also make it taller. And if I want more of a rounded look, I can use this. That looks nice. We'll come back to this drop zone. I want to change the background first. So we can use this color picker to pick a new background color. And let's try this blue. Let's see how that looks. Nope, not good. Now our color for rope is gone. So let's select the text, go back to the text inspector, go to face, and let's change that color to the dark purple as well. I can turn off these colors here, the top and bottom one with these opacity sliders. And you'll see a black background there and it's blurred the video underneath it. I can also change how much the background is blurred with this slider here. I can change the color of the black for something different, but I like how these look, so I'm gonna turn these back on. I can use this position to change where my info bar is. I'm gonna put it over here kind of on the left side. If I change my playhead, it updates, and we see the guy right there. I can also change the thickness or the length of my info bar. I can make it much bigger or much smaller. This rectangle on the bottom can be adjusted with the height slider, and I can also tweak how soft the edge is. There's also a drop shadow on the inside of the bar here. It makes it look like it's kind of sitting back behind the video, and I can control that right here. I can change the color of the drop shadow. I can also change the opacity. I can make it more obvious. I can blur it less so it's a harder line, and we can make it come out further so it looks like it's further away from the video. All right, let's check out our info bar. Oh, I can't wait to jump rope. So that's how to use InfoPop. If you have any questions, just email me at raisinhater at stupidraisins.com. Happy editing.